An independent book is a book owned and produced by its own creator. But the term can be confusing because it can also refer to an independent publisher or a guy trying to sell his own book at a convention. While Image Comics is considered an independent publisher, they publish creator-owned books. But I want to spend one day each month looking at the truly indie comics. So today, it's Blue Juice Publishing. If you're interested in purchasing the book, I'll be putting all of the relevant links down below. There are many tales in the world. Rat tales, cat tales, skinny tales, and fat tales. But the only ones truly worth telling are the tale tales. The legends! The ones that refuse to die! And today we're going to cover the legend of Anna Bonny, one of the greatest pirates to ever live! Except Uncle Ken doesn't want to complete the story. Ariana is a tad bit young still. Pooh! You're no fun! She exclaims. Maybe when you're older, Ariana. But that's not a tale for young girls, especially ones that are pretending to listen. I'm not pretending! There's a pirate attack over on the horizon! She tells him, looking out over the sea. And shockingly, Ken can see it with a spyglass. Well, I'll be damned, girl. I think you have the far side if you can see that far out. Ariana got super excited. Does this mean I'm special? But before Ken can explain any further, they are interrupted by Lord Firestorm, calling out Ken's full name, Shen Kenoshi. Ken tried to explain the power that the girl possesses, but Firestorm knocked him down and Ariana ran off. That night, she walked up on Ken as he was packing his things. It was time for him to move on. So Ariana begs him to take her with him. Please take her along. And Ken sadly tells her that she won't be safe with him. He isn't a safe man. She runs to him and he holds her close. But Ken, I only don't feel like an ugly orphan when you're telling me the legend of Anne Bonny or you're playing some silly game with me. He then reaches into his things and he pulls out a pendant. I want you to hold this for me. It's a key of sorts, and I'm trusting you to hold it until I get back. And as it does, time passes, and Ariana is dropping in on a treasure beneath the burning keep. Ariana, the treasure hunter, she exclaims as she lands on the boat. It's a boat with a magical lock, and with a smile, Ariana tries to fit the key into it. It's the pendant that Ken gave her so long ago. And there's a magical explosion as the boat is free from its locks. The figurehead on the boat literally wakes up and looks straight ahead with its eyes lighting up. Ariana rubs her head where she fell from the magical explosion and says to herself, Ariana and the magical ghost ship? Then a giant rock monster begins to chase the boat as it begins to move for the exit. Shen, if I make it out of here, I'm gonna kill you, she shouts. The figurehead on the ship can tell that something crazy is going on and it begins to steer the ship by itself while Ariana is begging it not to go towards the monster but the ship is setting up the rock monsters to blast each other. And the moment Ariana sees that, she begins beaming with joy. Until she sees that the ship is aiming for the rock face nearby. No, we'll be crushed, she shouts as the boat times a wave to launch it into the air and over the rock face, freeing itself from its prison. As the boat begins to drift off into the sea with Ariana smiling and happy, Firestorm is watching high from his tower, displeased. The Crimson Dawn is now awake. Ariana is completely unaware that the ship just saved her, and she thinks of herself as an epic pirate. She goes down below to see what her spoils are, and that's when she finds a chest filled with gold. Jumping around so excited, she notices a painting on the wall, one of the legendary Anne Bonny. She notices that it oddly looks just like she does, but before she can think anything else about it, Firestorm calls her on a nearby mirror to tell her to come home. But she quickly informs him that she is her own master now, and she's gonna be a pirate. She then proudly shows off her key, as long as I have this. But at that moment, a bird flies in, grabbing the key from her hands and landing on one of the nearby pistols. Ariana grabs a pistol and chases him to the deck where she takes a shot and hits him. He lands on the ground in front of her, covered in ash, and then he pokes his head up, bonking her on the nose. At that moment, another ship fires on her, demanding Anne Bonnie. They keep opening fire on Ariana and her ship moves on its own to take cover behind a rock face. The ship is faster than anything else currently on the ocean waters, and it manages to outmaneuver both ships trying to attack her. Then, they shoot themselves as each ship takes a shot at the other one. Once again, Ariana is jumping around overjoyed at how awesome of a pirate she is! And the figurehead of the ship can't believe that she thinks that she pulled it off. So Ariana's next plan is to go spend some of all of this gold at Sapphire Bay. As she climbs down with a bag of gold ready to spend it all, someone recognizes the ship's figurehead and can't believe that it's made it all the way to Sapphire Bay. Meanwhile, in a nearby desert, a man wrapped in bandages falls to the ground as he's trying his hardest to find a town or water or anything. And it would appear that he just came across Sapphire Bay. He comes running into town and crashes right into Ariana's cart of goods that she's bought with all of her money. That's when his hood falls off and all of the town's residents 
can see the control ruin on his face. He's a runaway slave. But as everyone is running off, Ariana turns to him and invites him onto her ship as her crew. Runaway slaves should stick together! She runs off to get him some water, and that's when the queen, his owner, arrives and activates his control ruin, throwing him to the ground. Ariana runs back and demands that the queen let him go, but that's when her guards knock Ariana to the ground. Her bird then flies into the person's face, saving Ariana. She grabs the slave, throws him on her car, and the two of them race down the streets, trying to get back to her ship as quickly as they can. The figurehead sees them coming down and begins to leave the bay just as Ariana launches off of the dock and lands both of them onto the ship. We made it! Ariana the Great wins again, she calls out. But the queen can activate the control ruin from a distance, and she does just that, dropping the slave to the ground. So Ariana grabs one of her pistols, and from the extreme distance that she is at, she takes aim and fires her gun. The bullet flies over the town, up the hill, breaking the queen's control staff, and it causes it to explode in her face. So her bodyguard jumps off the hill and using the houses, he launches himself onto the ship to enact his revenge. But he is instantly thrown off of the ship by Ken as he walks up from the deck down below. All right, the crew is Finn the slave, Ken the old timer, and Ariana the captain. Ken asks the obvious question as to why Ariana is even on this ship, and then asks the more important question, which is how are they moving with no one steering the ship at this moment? Ariana asks Ken if he's ever seen an enchanted pirate ship before. Oh, I have, less, but this is magic you shouldn't be messing with. Now, why did you leave when I told you to stay there? Because it was boring! You left me there! Well, you shouldn't be doing this or dragging this lad into a helpless child's mess. I'll show you helpless, Ariana says, grabbing a nearby pistol and opening fire on a bottle in the sky. Really, Ken says, telling her to do it again. But this time, as she opens fire, he also fires, throwing her off. Oh, sorry, were you startled? There's more to being a pirate than just being a good shot, Ariana. A storm begins to roll in as Ariana is thinking about what Ken said, and Ken notices that Finn is pouring water onto his bandages. What are you doing? Ken asks him. It feels good, Finn tells him. So Ken gets up and cuts off Finn's bandages, revealing gills on his shoulders and sides. At that moment, three mermen jump on board their ship, asking Kenoshi if this is a bad time. He tells them that he had no idea what this lad was, but the mermen don't want to hear it. Their race would be hunted and enslaved by this new race, and therefore, they strike Finn with a bolt of lightning, throwing him into the sea. Ariana calls out to him and turns back shocked to the mermen, holding her gun. They panic at the sight of her gun and they grab her, but down in the ocean below, Finn is beginning to feel a new strength running through him as he is finally touching the waters. Through the water, he can hear Ariana calling out to Finn for help. So he jumps onto the deck, hitting the mermen hard, throwing them off of the boat. He then grabs Ariana, pulling her out of the path of another lightning bolt, and it leaves back in, hitting another merman hard in the gut. The last one jumps at him with their trident, but he catches the pointy end and lifts the merman off the ground and throws him off the ship. He then looks around and can't find Ariana. She's run inside and he chases after her, asking her if she's okay. But she tells him, Some pirate I am, huh? My crew is in danger and all I could do is run away. All I ever do is run away. So what's even your deal, Finn? No idea. My mother never told me my father was a fish person. You'd think she'd tell me that. Yeah, adults tend to leave out the important details. Maybe I'm not cut out for this. It's all glamour and glory in the tales, but they don't tell you that your stomach falls out when you're in danger. Maybe Ken is right. Maybe I should just give this up. That's when she hears a thump behind her and sees Finn on his knees in front of her. I'm not letting you give up on your dream. You're already a great pirate. You gave me my freedom, my life, and I've seen you do the impossible with magic eyes. With magic eyes, keep going. There are many dangers in this world, from evil lords to evil queens to evil mermen, and our pirate Ariana plans on enjoying every minute of her pirate life as the captain of the Crimson Dawn. And soon, she'll have to face off against another evil pirate, Captain Bilgehart. And if you want to read those adventures, then continue where this story left off by grabbing issues four, five, and six that are out right now. You can get the trade paperback by clicking the links down below or getting the individual issues. I hope you guys enjoyed this, and I'll see you next month with another Indie Corner.